What's going on everybody? Welcome to another edition of Axe Creation. Today we're going to be looking at an advanced rhythm that will help develop your right-handed playing, especially for chugging along, as you heard in the beginning. And I use the word advanced lightly just because it will help you get to that point. And I like this particular rhythm because it helps develop or points out what tends to be a weakness in some players and that's accenting upbeats syncopating your riffs and as well as doing that with an upstroke on your right hand because a lot of us can, can just chug along but picking out points with upstrokes can be you know hard for some of us so hopefully this rhythm helps you get there it's actually taken from a protest the hero song um, we'll get to the rhythm in a minute but before we get started I'm a seven string standard tuning you don't have to be on a seven string but you can just apply the riff to whatever guitar you're playing uh, the tab and the backing tracks or down below in the description. Definitely download those, play those along. I have some a couple different tempos. Follow on the tab if you're having issues. So this rhythm, as I pointed out, accents the upbeat, and the pattern is pretty simple. We won't count it per se, but it is in four four, and you have groups of three sixteenth notes and then a long note. So it's right one two three long note, and then you have a group of six notes. So it's five quick, one long. One, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe you want to count that as two groups of three. Again, not rhythmic, just counting, grouping your riff so you can help get through it. One, two, three, one, two, three. Alright, so it's. And then we end with a two and one, right? So nice and slow we have. So like I said, it's not too difficult, rhythmically speaking, in the sense there are complicated subdivisions or anything going on, but it can be hard for some because you're accenting offbeats with upstrokes, and that tends, like I said, it tends to be a weakness. So we can, you can practice on an open string or any note you choose, whatever note you fancy, but here we go, a little up speed. All right, and then we can, obviously we can, Now, because we all tend to just be able to do that, no problem, but gaining control over that and accenting specific beats tends to be a weakness. And I want to talk a minute about gripping your pick. Because some people tend to over-grip their pick because you're just, you're holding on for dear life as you're going through. And the more you squeeze, the more tension you're creating. And the more tension you have, the stiffer you're going to be. So. Hold your pick lightly, you want it to be comfortable. Take your time, play with a metronome if you have to. Get control of the rhythm and feel it flow. And then once that happens, the speed will come right after that. So take your time. And don't forget to breathe when you play. It'll help loosen everything up. So the riff I constructed around is, you know, puts that theme or this riff throughout the whole thing. All right, so those of you who feel that maybe the, riff is, the rhythm is too repetitive, that's the point. It's supposed to drive this home. It's supposed to be an exercise, a musical example, not a compositional masterpiece. So the riff is constructed around a harmonic minor scale. You can think of it as C sharp minor, harmonic minor. But I'm actually playing on the lower end of it, so I'm actually doing... Phrygian dominant, which is just the fifth mode. If you're not familiar with that, Google your harmonic minor modes. This is an extremely common one, and we're in a ninth position on, on the low B. So we have 9, 10, moving to the E string, 8, 9, 11, 12. And essentially those are the only notes we're playing, and then I descend it later on in the riff. So we have 9, 7, 5, 4. On the second fret on our low string, that's our C sharp. And then we... So that's what we're constructing. So instead of just chugging open string, all right, I put accented notes and built the riff around that again to help develop the feel. 
So the notes that we're playing, we have 13 is the first note, 10, 9, and that 13 is the same note as 8 on our string. So we have, and that repeats, we're just going to change the last note. Instead of 9 on our B, it's now 11 on our A string. Right? And that's essentially the main aspect of the riff. Feel free to put a little vibrato on those, bring those notes to life. And I, you go through that three times, and then I just do a little triplet fill. I would downstroke that. If anybody's used to playing Slayer or any kind of thrash metal, you'll have no problem playing that. So, you do a, I'll play that slow for you, because you've already heard it, full tempo. Right. Right, and then we go through that, and then I just do a little fill, again, just to connect it and make some kind of quasi-song. And the fill I do... I hit the low B three times, and then I go up the harmonic minor scale, 9, 10. On the next string, 8, 12, 11, 9, 8. Hold that note out and do a little, little trill. 10. And that's it. To the next part. Where I'm just playing the minor thirds, but they're all scale choices. Again, just driving that rhythm home. And there, I actually don't play that out. I actually jump back up to 10. And then I just, again, I bring back the triplet feel. Five, four, two, one, two, four. And that is our riff. So like I said, the tabs are in the description, backing tracks are in the description. I'll put some multiple tempos up there. And again, just take your time, control your rhythm, control your tension in your right hand, because you want this to be fluid. All right, and nice, strong, upstroking accents. So as always, let me know what you come up with, and until then, I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.